Hi, my name's Amanda Foxham Hill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So what are we going to do in here? Well, really, I'm just going to explore um, with you some of the things, some of the weirdness that is being suddenly autistic at the age of 46. Um, so obviously that's not true. I must have been autistic my whole life, but I've only just found out um, for sure. Um, and that goes alongside another diagnosis that I've had for a year and a bit now, which is my ADHD. Um, so it's kind of weird being an older person. I mean, I know I'm not old, old, but I'm not young um, and finding these things out. So really that's what this video is about. That's what this whole channel is about. It's about going down into that experience and unpicking oh so that's what that means and that's what that means and then giving some examples as we go so that's what I hope to find out here I haven't you know I haven't done all my videos ahead of time I have done some so I'm going to upload a few now and you can have a look through and see what you think and hopefully you like it and you'll stick with us for those who are wanting to learn some more I'm going to give you a little bit more information right now so I am a, um, oh, where shall I start? I was a born scientist. So I was born all those years ago, 46 years ago, and I started experimenting as um, with everything I could from a very young age. So I've always been really curious, very scientific and very logical in my thinking, but also very deep and very full on. So I've headed into life like really head first um, and pulled everything apart, analysed it and tried to work it out. So that's just the way I am. Um, and some of that has, will probably no doubt always be there as part of my personality. And others are these layers that we might describe as being ADHD or autism. So that's, that's sort of that. Um, so in my adult life, I've managed to um, set up a business. So I'm a cosmetic chemist um, and I have been running a consultancy company with that for the last 22, 23 years, which is pretty good, I reckon, under the circumstances of being a little bit um, scattered, shall we say. So um, running a business, running my own ship, um, making a success of it, um, managing a family, you know, being a mother of a couple of kids, it's all been possible and it's all been um, something that I have, um, I have got through. Um, I can't say that I've got through it all unscathed and I can't say that all of that has been completely functional and, and I'm sure that I'll explore some of that with you in this. So being a mother um, who's turned out to be autistic is a little bit um, difficult um, uh, in retrospect and it was also difficult as I was doing it to be honest. Um, because emotions and understanding other people's emotions and being engaged with and responding to is something that, that I struggle with. Um, I didn't realise to what degree, but now on reflection it seems to have been quite a big thing. Um, and other things as well, like being, you know, going down in my own rabbit holes and, um, and my own sensory journeys. So there's a whole heap to unpick there. Um, Outside of that, what do I like to do? So on this, um, because it's going to be, I must, must backtrack, this channel is going to be about my journey through my eyes and some of the things that happen and some experiences. So it's very much, well, what's going on? You know, how does this look? What's it like to be someone with these diagnoses and a person at the same time with a life? So that's what it is. It's not going to be, you know, oh, now I'm a psychologist and now I'm an expert in this. It's not going to be that at all. Um, very personal. So me as a person, I've, like I said, always liked science, very scientific into cosmetic science, but I also like bush regeneration, which I kind of mentioned with the Fox Hill Hollow thing. I like the birds, I like mushrooms, I like science, I like, did I say I like science? I love science. Um, all of that kind of thing, really. So I just get very excited about that and life in general um, and other things. So basically, that's, I like to be outside with nature. So what about my diagnosis, ADHD and autism? Well, the ADHD came first and I went for that. So um, being a lady of my age, um, I think it's quite common for people in their midlife crisis um, to try and discover who they really are. Well, who am I really? Um, and when you think about it, it's fairly logical, fairly logical for me. I started off as a kid in a family that wasn't you know, necessarily what I'd built. It's just what I popped out of the womb into. Um, and then I went to uni and then I got married and had my own family and I was a mother and when you're a mother you're, 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 your needs are secondary to the children's. Um, that's the rule by the way. Um, 
and then you end up here as a 40 something person who for the first time in your whole existence can actually indulge yourself and be all about yourself and find out who you really are so that's what's going on here so one of the things that I did before thinking about any um, diagnosis of, of, you know, neurodiversity is try and work through my own sense of self, you know, any unresolved trauma, relationship issues, childhood things that were just still annoying me. So that was the therapy. So I started that at about the age of 35, 36, maybe 37. So that was a good while ago now. And then when I was sure that um, the majority of my childhood experiences and my life growing up feeling a bit awkward was sort of resolved to some degree that's when I started to be able to see the bits that were left um, and the bits that were kind of like yeah not quite in sync yet and so the first thing I noticed was my ADHD or the symptoms of that and that's where I went to try and get an assessment and it wasn't easy it took me several times to go um, to actually find a place that could assess me um, and then to save up the money to get the assessment and wait for the appointment so it was a couple of thousand dollars if I remember rightly it wasn't cheap um, the, the assessment was with a neuropsychologist so that's what happened here in Australia um, and took a whole day of testing so we first of all did a history so a personal history of you know what's going on again so that the therapist can rule out things like trauma or other personality disorders or substance abuse or you know maladaptive personality traits whatever it might be um, and then there was a, a whole schema of, of tests so you know looking at your IQ your functioning your processing and all of that they write a report you come back in they tell you that it's it looks like it could be ADHD and then you go off to a psychiatrist the psychiatrist, if they agree with that, they will then um, again interview you, have a chat to you, then you have to come back a bit later and at that later date they may or may not give you some medication, they may or may not send you off for some type of therapy, depending on what's going on and who, the, who your um, psychiatrist is. At that point I was given dexamphetamine and um, I proceeded to come home um, tentatively try out a dose of the drug um, and wow it was amazing so my um my adhd i was sure that i had adhd after taking the stimulant medication and then feeling clear calm and much more centered enough so that i could carry on the mundane tasks of the household like washing up and cleaning without having my brain go off in 10 million directions and have to go and immediately find out the microbial um, load of a product or the um, you know molecular formula of a mushroom or something weird so um, basically the ADHD diagnosis is then complete once the medication works like that as opposed to what it does if you're not ADHD and that's um, get you a bit hyper and maybe even addicted so I definitely didn't have that um, so that was the ADHD the ADHD diagnosis came with me trying to seek some clarity and um, trying to make sense of some of the patterns of chaos that I found um, autism was a bit different so that's come only more recently and that was out of a different layer of, of desperation really and that was to help um, you know to help make sense of my role within my family and maybe how um, some of the um, deficits or differences of being me has impacted on my on my family my children my um, my environment and my life still so the things that that you know general growing up and or, um, and ADHD didn't sort of account for um, made me look for the ASD diagnosis and again that's been quite a process lots and lots of questionnaires lots of history some um, you know um, input from family members, um, a bit of reflection onto sensory, some observation and analysis, all of that kind of thing. Um, and that's dug up some very interesting things, which is the kind of thing that I'm going to be illustrating and talking about oops, in this blog, um, or sorry, video um, channel. Um, things like sensory differences. So, you know, the way I process the world through my senses is very different to normal, um, different enough to be a problem at times. I can have high po and high per sensitivity to different inputs. Things can be quite overwhelming um, in a way that's not anxiety driven. It's not a social anxiety or whatever. It's very much an internal um, processing difference that I have. I have issues and differences over my um, 
my other senses, like how I take up space and how I um, integrate knowledge about where my body is in space. So the bottom line for that is I can be extremely clumsy, extremely clumsy, and um, I can hurt myself by accident, basically, by banging into things, dropping things, you know, letting go of things that I'm holding, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of that sensory thing that kind of gets explained with the autism. Um, and the other thing that the autistic diagnosis really clarified for me is why um, in spite of being quite a high energy, high octane person that doesn't really need a lot of sleep and doesn't tend to feel mentally depressed very often, that I've had a lot of what I now know are shutdowns um, or, you know, stuck, freeze sort of reactions, which is basically where when, when I go into overload for long enough and I'm trying to push through and be, perform like a functional member of society, um, my body just ends up saying no and I end up with this maybe, you know, if I'm lucky a day, if it's normal maybe a week and if I'm very unlucky it can be a month or so of really struggling to actually function in the world with regards to, you know, getting anything done. You know, I mean, yes, I can get up. Yes, I can do what looks to be daily stuff. But, you know, I'm really not. I'm really struggling. The autism assessment, um, the clarity I got with that also helped me realise that, you know, understand, sorry, why when I go to some shops and um, perform some daily tasks or go to parties that, you know, it can take me several days to get over that. I might need to go to bed. I run out of words, I stop being able to talk, you know, all that kind of thing. So for me, sitting here, I know that a, um, ADHD and ASD tend to, or I realise that they do seem to come together quite a lot, and people are wondering, well, what is one and what is the other? For me, it's, it's relatively obvious where the ADHD comes in and where the autism comes in. And to be honest, I think the two of them in me have been um, quite useful to counterbalance each other. And, and stop me being too impulsive, but also stop me being too routine focused and stuck. Um, but on the other hand, left unchecked, they can lead me in a cycle of massive burnout, taking on too much, letting people down, getting in a mess, feeling bad about myself and, and all of that. So it's really good that I've got to this point. Um, now I'm left with what it's like being diagnosed, the realisation, and I, I suppose that's, that's again, that's what these videos are all about. It's about going through that, that and making it visual and making it relatable and bite-sized. So my videos, I'm planning to do the majority of them in three minutes or less, because I figured that that's the best way to get information out to people who are busy. Um, and also to sum up what, what otherwise would be quite a verbose interaction as I'm prone to do. So sorry if this is that. Um, in a nutshell, what it's like to be my age and, and, and find out that these things are true of you and you actually do have these when you've maybe not been 100% sure before or actually just dismissed it totally. It's weird, to be honest. It's quite weird, but it's also good and it's also a cause for a bit of a morning time because you are, uh, I, I should say, I have felt myself feeling a little bit sad about the struggles that I've had and why have I got to this age and nobody noticed sooner. Um, I feel a bit sad for the me that, um, you know, is a bit isolated in the world sometimes and doesn't share a lot of experiences with other people, especially sensory experiences. Like, you know, I don't tend to inter interpret things the same way as most people, not all people. So it can feel a bit lonely. However, being autistic, I am actually happy in my autism bubble and I do like being alone and I am very much an introvert. And um, and so it's kind of like, you know, I do get over myself a little bit as well, but, but it's weird. It's definitely weird and it's definitely different. Um, so that's what this is all about. It's about how I'm integrating these diagnoses into my life, how I'm using this to um, to empower myself going forward and, and, and clearly um, so that I can be a better person and so that I can achieve what I'm out here to achieve, which is, you know, helping others. Um, and I don't mean that in a, I want to be the helper. I actually don't. I like to be on my own. But I do think that we're all on this planet for such a short time. But if we can be our best selves and be our authentic selves and our whole selves, that is what we need to do and that's what we should strive to do. So that's what I am hopefully now able to do. 
so anyway I thought I'd just finish by drawing you a little picture so here's my um, little board here um, and I'll draw you a picture of where I think all this fits with me so I, I think we come out into the world as people so I'm going to draw a people <laughs> a person and it's a happy person because I'm a fairly happy person I would say I'm a very happy person actually um, so I think we come into this world and while we're in the womb and forming or wherever we get formed or whatever we have this personality so that's how we come out we come out fully dressed with personality um, I've had two children they've grown to such a point now that I can sort of you know look at them and see and I swear that their personality was formed in the womb that yes in things that happen outside relationships that you have exposure to things you know privileges and um, tr um, and trauma and stuff like that definitely impact you but you come out as a full person with a personality preferences and a, and a thinking style so there's me with my whole potential there and then um, that's all going on and it's all going on inside my autism bubble so I was born with my autism ASD I don't know whether I can do it that way ASD so I was born with my autism bubble and for me when I think about autistic and me I think about that being a um, an autonomous person so I'm a very autonomous person in the world I'm self-sufficient I'm self-contained I'm self-regulated I'm in a bubble of one and I generally like that I like being in there so that is me with my personality that's formed and exists outside or inside of my autistic diagnosis but as a complete personality and then it's just expressed through the autism but then in my brain I've got the ADHD so I know it isn't quite like that but this is a schema schematic thing so my brain is where the processing happens of information and my brain takes information into and out of my bubble and it basically chucks it all over the place so it might chuck some into my body it might chuck some on my face it might chuck some in the air it might chuck some on the floor and then I fall over it or give myself feet you know my ADHD brain is sticking information everywhere and also it doesn't know where to focus so it can bring a lot in and it can spit a lot out so I can share too much and I can suck too much of everyone else's stuff in but essentially that's my ADHD brain it's throwing stuff everywhere now occasionally I have to retreat the whole of this back so that I can process what's here what's for me what's not and make some sense of it and maybe try and organize it neither my ADHD me or my um, or my ASD me is very good at organizing this stuff so we just make do so that's why I have to be very careful and selective over what I get in but at the end of the day there's still this person inside here which has its own motivation sense of identity and self and it's pretty intact so the this is how I relate to the um, diagnosis so far um, I look forward to um, sharing more information with you hopefully some of it will be useful um, yeah and um, entertaining as much as I can make it and I'll try and keep them all out in nature so that it's a little bit um, nice visually stimulating hmm. yes goodbye